All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Mitch Bishop. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer for .NET Nuke. Welcome to the next in a series of web seminars. Um, this one entitled Best Practices for World-Class E-Commerce. And we're very pleased to have on the line with us a couple of guest speakers. And uh, together, the three of us, I think, uh, have a very interesting story to tell about how to integrate world-class e-commerce capabilities with world-class website capability. Um, today we have um, Joe Benson, who is the Chief Operating Officer for a company called Vortex. And um, she will be talking about ASP.NET storefront. And um, the um, other speaker that we have on board is uh, Lori McDonald who is the CEO of a .NET new partner called Brilliance Business Solutions. So we will um, weave everything together for you guys in a few minutes. But before we get there, I want to make sure that everybody can uh, hear us. So if you could use the, um, the little hand on your panel and raise your hand if you can hear us, that would be great. Great, it looks like uh, everybody can hear us. And also, um, we want to make sure that you can see our slides. So once again, if you could raise your hand, if you can see our slides, that would be wonderful. Super, okay, it looks like most of you can, um, can see us. Just a quick housekeeping note. You'll notice on your GoTo web webinar panel that there is a way to ask questions. Everybody that's listening in today is on mute, so we can't hear you. But you can ask questions at any time. And um, if everything goes well, according to uh, our rehearsal times and everything, it looks like we'll have about 20 minutes at the end to, um, to answer questions uh, that you guys post in the, in the questions panel. So um, please feel free to post questions at any time, and we'll get to them at the end of the web seminar. All right, so um, we have a, a cast of characters here. So let me just introduce who's um, speaking and, and what we're going to be talking about. Again, I'm Mitch Bishop. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer for .NET Nuke. And uh, we'll have a brief introduction to .NET Nuke later on in the, in the broadcast. But .NET Nuke um, is a web content management system. In fact, we're the leading web content management system for Microsoft. And um, the other speaker, Joe Benson, is the COO for a company called Vortex. They have a product called ASP.NET Storefront, which is a, a leading e-commerce solution for the .NET world. And the third speaker is uh, Lori McDonald. She's the CEO for Brilliance Business Solutions. And they've created a product called Inesto Nuke, which um, basically glues together and integrates this uh, world-class e-commerce capability with world-class website capability. So hopefully that will give you kind of the big picture of who's talking and, and what we're presenting today. Uh, there will be a live demonstration later of Inesto Nuke. Um, but um, to start things off, I'd like to introduce Lori McDonald from Brilliance, who are, is going to set the stage by talking about some best practices for e-commerce. Thanks, Mitch. I'm really excited about the information that we have to share today. And one of the reasons I'm so excited is that we get to talk about how to grow your businesses. So over the last few years, while the economy has been slow, e-commerce has continually been a bright spot. Fourth quarter numbers in 2011 showed growth between 15 and 25 percent in year-over-year -year online retail numbers. And while retail is flashy and gets a lot of attention, global marketing intelligence firm IDC estimates that 85% of all electronic commerce worldwide is business to business. So whether you sell to consumers or to businesses, e-commerce is the expectation. And it's not a matter of if you're going to implement e-commerce, but how. So despite the potential payoff for e-commerce, many businesses are overwhelmed with the challenges of setting up an e-commerce site. If you have thousands of products, how do you get those loaded and manage those on an ongoing basis? 
How do you keep pricing and inventory up to date? Once you get this influx of orders, how do you keep up with it? How do you ensure quality in your fulfillment and operations? If these concerns weren't enough, you're hearing things about credit card fraud and your requirement to be PCI compliant, and you may not even be sure what that means. To, to top it all off, you hear that mobile device use is dramatically on the rise, so it's not enough to develop an e-commerce site anymore. You have to build your website to be enabled for mobile commerce. So all of these factors lead merchants to question if they are ready to use e-commerce. But there's great news. We're here today to talk about the software tools that can enable you not just to put e-commerce in place, but to create an online presence that can decrease your overall costs, increase your sales, and grow your profits. So as a first step, let's talk about product management. Many companies, when they look at e-commerce, have easily more than 100 products to get on their websites. In fact, you may have hundreds of thousands of SKUs to manage. So how do you do that? Well, we will answer that question, but first it's important to understand the type of information that you need to manage. It isn't enough to have a product name and price. You need to give customers all of the information that they need to make a purchase. As we look at best practices, it's always good to see what online leaders are doing. We know that Amazon has a budget to invest in studying what users respond to, and so it's great to learn from their research. We can see that Amazon highlights the availability of products on their website, and for good reason. Forrester Research found that when manufacturers display product stock status on behalf of online retailers, they see average conversion rates that are more than 100% higher downstream than if they aren't showing inventory. This tells us something that we already intuitively know. The more insight we give customers about our products and our, our ability to get it to them quickly, the more likely that they are to buy from us. So one of the things that we can get out of this is that it's important whenever possible to provide accurate inventory information on your website with your products. How do you manage all of that inventory? Well, the key is integration with your business software. So the, the software that you're using for accounting and inventory management. So we'll touch on this more later as we talk about order management, but let's continue looking at the information that you need to be sharing with customers to get their order. We're going to take a look at product images. So again, here we see that the more insight we can give customers, the better. Usability, Jacob, usability expert Jacob Nielsen has pulled together some great research highlighting the importance of providing photos to visitors that allow them to tell the difference between products. And what he found in his research is that flashy images in general are ignored, but images that show users details about the products, they carefully look at those. And so this means that the more product views that you can provide, the better. So let's take a look at our next best practice, which is search. As you think about your products, it isn't enough to maintain the data on your website. If you want to draw users in, you need to be submitting your product information to online product search sites, including Google's product search, like we see here. But how do you manage one more place to maintain all of that data? Uh, well, the good news is that with the right tools, you don't have to. The right e-commerce software will manage this for you, allowing the data that you're, you're maintaining in your online store to automatically feed into online product search engines. So if we look at our next best practice, it's order management. Once your site is up and running, you may have hundreds of orders coming in every day. In order to keep customers coming back, you have to ship orders out quickly. The faster the order ships, the more likely the customers will return and order from you again. So how do you manage? Again, this all comes back to integration. You want to automate the flow of orders into your ERP or business software, have the pick list print automatically on your shop floor. If you don't have the capability to fulfill efficiently, you can also integrate your e-commerce site with third-party vendors who can handle this fulfillment process for you. And really, the integration doesn't stop with getting the order into your back office. As the order ships out, you need to have integration in place to take the tracking information back out to the website, marking items as shipped, and sending emails to your customers regarding the status of their order. 
So we'll move on from here to take a look at security. Last year, according to the Bureau of Justice Statistics, about 8 million U.S. households experienced some form of identity theft, totaling $13 billion. And in most cases, this was due to credit card fraud. <laughs> what we know is that merchants must take security seriously. The payment card industry has a huge stake in what happens here. To address this, the payment card industry developed a set of data security standards. And these are a requirement for any merchant accepting credit cards. And this is enforced by banks and processors. Meeting this requirement is what we refer to as PCI compliance. If you're accepting credit cards, you've received notices from your merchant account processor alerting you to your need to be PCI compliant. And if you're setting up a new merchant account, you may have found that your processor is requiring you to prove your PCI compliance before they'll finish the setup of your account. While there are 12 requirements, there are 220 sub-requirements for PCI compliance, some of which can place an incredible burden in time and money, and many of which are subject to interpretation. Small and medium-sized um, merchants, it, so if you're processing less than 20,000 transactions a year, you can become compliant by completing a self-assessment questionnaire and performing and reviewing quarterly scans. But what's What's concerning is that studies show that 48% of merchants that are filling out this paperwork don't understand the PCI requirements, and they don't understand the necessary steps that they need to comply with the PCI data standards, and this puts them at risk. We could spend hours talking about PCI compliance, but, but three important things that, that I wanted to mention today. Um, yeah, first, it isn't just a matter of if you're storing credit card numbers. Storing credit card data on your system is something you should avoid at all costs from a risk and a PCI compliance point of view. However, even if you are not storing the full credit card numbers, if the data is transmitted through your network, you still have to demonstrate your compliance with the PCI security standards. The next thing is that this isn't just about your website. This is also about how you handle credit card data in any interactions with customers, anytime you store, process, or transmit credit card data. Many businesses fail to recognize that the business practices that they need to change start with when you're on the phone with a customer. If you write a credit card number down on a piece of paper, or you read it back to them and other people in your office can hear, these are not secure practices, and they need to be revisited. So, so the PCI compliance process requires businesses to revisit their handling of credit cards in every area of their business. Third, and, and this is where there's some good news in terms of PCI compliance, is that there are options in terms of payment methods that reduce the amount of work that you need to do in the PCI compliance process. There are payment methods that don't transmit the credit card information through your servers, and so these reduce the scope of your PCI compliance. So these include payment methods like PayPal and Amazon Checkout. And in the past, many merchants didn't want to use payment methods like these because um, they were concerned that as visitors were taken off their website, that that might be confusing for them, um, and they may not complete the transaction, and they wanted really to offer a seamless experience for their end user. But there are now payment methods such as an authorized.net direct post, direct post method that's shown in this diagram uh, this allows customers to be on your website, to have a consistent look and feel, but to have their credit card information directly post to Authorize.net, never touching your servers. So your server is simply alerted that the transaction was successful, and the customer experiences your consistent user interface throughout the entire process. Our next best practice is customer experience. So merchants can find one-time success through great search engine rankings and a highly optimized landing page. You can get an order that way. But where you really make money is when those customers make repeat purchases. And encouraging repeat purchases is one of the many benefits of building an online community. So what we see here is the online deal site Woot. They allow their customers to discuss daily deals in their customer forums. This encourages a sense of belonging and builds brand loyalty. 
What's interesting is that community features have been slow for many e-commerce sites to adopt because really the e-commerce software platforms weren't built with online communities in mind. So this is one of the strengths of using .NET Nuke and ASP.NET Storefront together. .NET Nuke is built for community and ASP.NET Storefront is built for e-commerce. By combining these tools, you can create an environment that builds brand awareness, encourages customers to come back for the, the great tools that you have on your website, and makes it easy for them to purchase your products. The next best practice that we want to look at is to go social. So uh, Nielsen has reported that uh, in the US, users spent 53 billion minutes on Facebook in a single month last year. Uh, we as an online community, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook and Pinterest, and, and we want to know what our friends are doing. Uh, there's research from Share This and Starcom Media Group that showed that 10% of all website visits come from social sharing, and it accounts for 31% of referral traffic. So the thing to take away from here is that you want to make it easy for users to share your products via their social networks. And one easy step is to add social sharing buttons on your product pages and other key pages on your site. The last best practice that we're going to look at is to go mobile. So you know, by 2014, mobile devices are expected to be used more than desktop computers to access the web. This represents a major shift for online business, and we know that many major retailers have taken notice. As we see in these examples, companies are optimizing their websites for mobile. And mobile is another strong reason to use .NET Nuke and ASP.NET Storefront together. With .NET Nuke's mobile offering in 6.1, paired with ASP.NET Storefront's mobile add-on that I, I know you'll hear Joe talk more about shortly, this enables you to build a complete platform that's optimized with the mobile user in mind. So taking a look at all of these best practices, I'm going to turn it back over to Mitch so that we can continue to learn how .NET Nuke and ASP.NET Storefront allow you to implement these best practices for world-class e-commerce and world-class websites. Hey, thanks so much, Lori. That was really, really good and useful information. What I wanted to do is just give everybody a quick five, ten minute overview of .NET Nuke. Um, a lot of you probably already know what .NET Nuke is about, but um, there's a lot of folks on the line that may not know what .NET Nuke is. So just a quick overview. Um, we are a, a web content management system, as I mentioned earlier. We um, have a long history as an open source project in the Microsoft world. In fact, the largest open source project ever for Microsoft. and um, we started offering commercial versions of our product three years ago. In that process, we've talked to literally thousands of organizations worldwide, and a common theme has emerged from all those conversations, and that is that um, small businesses, mid-market businesses, even large enterprises, um, nonprofit organizations, government agencies, uh, higher educational institutions, everybody struggles with this concept of agility. How do we respond faster to the unpredictable change that's happening in the world, particularly from a technology point of view, but um, through our lens, especially on the web? A company's web presence is, is next to their people, their most important business asset. And what we do at .NET Nuke is provide a web platform that's adaptive. It allows you to adapt quickly and affordably to the change that's happening in the world right now. Um, just a few years ago, it would have been impossible to predict how fast the social revolution has taken over the internet, or how fast uh, smartphones, tablets, the mobile revolution is, is taking over. And I think businesses are concerned with, how do I take advantage of these opportunities in a way that's fast and affordable? Um, and so it becomes much more important to pick the right platform and um, the platform that allows you to um, adapt quickly, and that's what we do. Um, just some company highlights. Um, as I mentioned, we uh, started out as an open source project. We now have more than 1,700 commercial customers. Last year, we were very excited to be named to the Inc. 500 fastest growing list of privately held companies in the US. Um, 
there are over 700,000 websites on the, on the planet that are powered by .NET Nuke. And um, a few years ago, uh, we acquired a, an online marketplace, which is now called the .NET Nuke Store. And it's a commercial marketplace for applications, extensions, um, designs for your website that allow you to quickly and affordably build um, onto a .NET Nuke's platform to get your website built and, and deployed quickly. Um, over the last few years, there have been over 7 million downloads of our product. And because of our open source roots, there's an extremely large community standing ready to help in case you need um, advice on, on how to move forward. So at the end of the day, .NET Nuke is the hub of your most important business asset. And um, what we provide in our platform are world-class capabilities that allow you to um, create a commercial-grade web presence and do it uh, fast and affordably. Um, if you, if uh, you don't find what you need built into our platform, you can either go to our store and find it there, or um, you can build custom extensions very easily yourself. And um, uh, it's for that reason that our developer community is so large, is because the .NET new platform is so be easy to build on. So how does this work? Well, um, it's web engagement, right? But it's a web engagement at the speed of business. So starting with our platform, uh, which can be hosted um, in any kind of data center that you want, um, or on-premise, um, you then add to the mix tens of thousands of developers, um, a store with thousands and thousands of apps, and you can customize your solution in real time. So um, the reason that we've grown so fast is that our platform is extensible. It's, um, it's supremely flexible in that uh, you'll see .NET Nuke implementations in all sorts of different industries and different usage models. And it's adaptable to um, new technologies, new opportunities that have come down the road. Uh, Lori, for instance, talked a lot about, uh, in her last best practice, about mobile. And the .NET Nuke 6.1 release that just came out in November offers a, a wide uh, and uh, extensive range of mo mobile capabilities that allow you to very quickly deploy mobile versions of your website that are device independent. Um, this is, uh, these are just some of our customers. There's stories behind all of this. Um, we're publishing more and more of these stories on our website. I would encourage people to, to go to our site to, to see these stories. So at the end of the day, business people really love .NET Nuke because they're able to um, get to market fast and um, they're no longer kind of tied to IT, waiting for IT to make changes to their site and their web presence. Um, they can independently take control of content and, um, um, you know, as I mentioned, adapt to new opportunities that are, uh, are uh, emerging all the time. Developers really love .NET Nuke because it's extensible and the fact that um, they can quickly build custom extensions if they need to um, every company feels like they, uh, they're they unique, and um, the platform itself um, lets developers easily and quickly build those extensions that they need. And there's thousands of designs or skins to uh, make your website, your .NET Nuke website can look, you know, anything like you want it to look. Um, we've invested, obviously, over the last nine years in a, in a battle-tested, robust platform, so um, you're your decision on .NET Nuke is, is always going to be a solid one. Um, and with that, I'd like to introduce um, Joe Benson, who's the COO of Vortex, who will give a quick introduction of ASP.NET Storefront, and then we'll bring it all together for you guys with a, uh, with a demonstration of something called Inesto Nuke. So uh, Joe, take it away. Thank you, Mitch, and thank you, Laurie. I, I usually like to talk for just a moment or two before I say anything important while people adjust to a different accent on this, this presentation today. So forgive a few words while I just let you sink into the fact that I speak like a stranger. I, I love the perfect circle that we represent here. Uh, one of the reasons why I see it as a perfect circle is because 
until my company, Vortex, acquired ASP.NET Storefront, which is what we're here to talk about today. Until that time, we used .NET Nuke as our platform of choice for our own uh, Vortex website. So uh, I consider that we know .NET Nuke really very well. We, we love it dearly as a content management product. And what we liked always about .NET Nuke is the fact that, and I'm going to repeat Mitch here, is the fact that it's, it's essentially a really great framework onto which you can add purpose-built and purchasable extensions and then to take it even further, you can go out and invest in custom uh, custom extensions. And exactly, as a, exactly the same thing is true of ASP.NET Storefront. It is essentially a .NET e-commerce framework. And just as in .NET Nuke, we, uh, we host a marketplace of add-ons, and some of those will, will, I will quickly run through. And beyond that, of course, it can be uh, customized. It isn't open source, but it's full source. We sell full source for this product. And so it can be customized in, without limitation. And that, of course, is where Brilliance Web and Glory come in. What we are all here to learn about today is the fact that we have here two frameworks, .NET Nuke as a content management framework and ASP.NET Storefront as an e-commerce framework. And what Brilliance Web are offering is a really great um, extension of the two, an integration of the two, which is what she's going to be, to be demonstrating. Laurie this morning has given us all a great overview of e-commerce best practices. If you want to sell as well as, uh, as, well as publicize yourself on the web, then there are those best practices. And none of you would expect other than that I am going to tell you all the reasons why this particular shopping cart matches all of those best practices. Quickly about our company, Vortex is our service arm, ASP.NET Storefront is our product. Uh, world class e-commerce since 1997, well established, more than 10,000, we think now more than 15,000 customers globally using our e-commerce. Um, extremely extensible and, uh, and infinitely flexible. I'm hoping somebody will move the slide on for me. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to step through matching the best practices that Laurie told us all about. Uh, of course, we have sophisticated inventory tracking. Uh, sophisticated in that it allows inventory tracking by, uh, by variant, by attribute, um, uh, and at the same time, it's simple to configure that. You can uh, hide out of stock, display in stock. We all saw the Amazon display earlier. Uh, and all of that is possible out of the box with ASP.NET Storefront. And echoing the story of add-ons, the community of add-ons also allows you to buy item back into stock. I'm going to go ding, every time I want the slide to move on, ding. Thank you. Uh, image man management is always going to be vitally important. Uh, uh, today, more than ever, shoppers are buying on the basis of the first seven seconds. And what most eyes are drawn to first off is, is images. ASP.NET Storefront allows uh, a number of images per product actually um, more or less unlimited images per product, image sizes per product. We have image gallery, we have swatches, and we have more add-ons still. This is an add-on that we can see here, advanced an, an advanced image viewer. Thank you. Uh, product feeds are hugely important. It's, it's great. Um, I hope that many of you listening today are, are committed to a website powered by .NET Nuke, e-commerce powered by ASP.NET Storefront, and in a world where uh, Mitch has already shown us 700,000 websites powered alone by .NET Nuke, and then all those others powered by everything else, billions we suspect, of websites. And how are you going to get found? And today the way you're going to get found is by making sure that you're on the social shopping sites. 
in this particular case, Google product search, the find, Amazon, extending out now to buy.com, to shopping, to shopzilla, to next tag. Those are the places to be found if you're going to combine e-commerce with your web store. ASP.NET Storefront introduces something that we call dot feed. Uh, it's a really fabulous rule-based engine that allows you to feed all the information about the products that you're selling on your .NET Nuke and ASP.NET Storefront store, feed them to those social collaborative shopping sites. Uh, really consolidating the effort here is, is the message for 2012 and will make it incredibly easy to optimize that feed. Yeah. Order management, and, and here we extend even further. So if we use .NET Nuke for content, if we use ASP.NET Storefront to capture the order, and that's the point, that's where we take this to. You can display your product, you can lead the shoppers by the hand, you can capture the order, and then beyond still further integration into, in our case, 40 different accounting or enterprise solutions, tax solutions, international shipping, domestic shipping, shipping tracking, all of those things are further integrations, all of which are offered today. Just visit ASP.NET Storefront, come to our marketplace, and you'll see just how far you can extend the integration. You really can take enterprise level business uh, to its core through combining .NET Nuke, ASP.NET Storefront, and the integration that goes beyond. Ding. Uh, this displays what we do. We have sophisticated filtering, allows our store owners, and hopefully that's some of you listening today, will be able to use um, our store in conjunction with your .NET Nuke website, and, and be able to filter the orders that we will help you take. We're very proud of the fact that ASP.NET Storefront really is a great order machine. It gives you everything you can possibly need to lead a, a visitor to become a shopper, to become a customer. PCI compliance, Laura did a really great job of explaining that whereas uh, not very long ago, still now probably many people are under the misconception that PCI compliance is only an issue if you are storing credit cards. And it's just no longer true. PCI has driven us all to take very seriously the attitude that we bring to capturing and transmitting and storing credit card, cardholder information. We have to take this seriously. And here we have listed uh, a number of ways in which ASP.NET Storefront can allow you to capture, transmit cardholder data without ever, ever touching it yourself. So essentially this is about embedding other checkout mechanisms seamlessly into ASP.NET Storefront. Authorize.net is, uh, is an extension to that which Laurie and Brilliance Web bring as an add-on. The others are provided straight out of the cart with, with uh, Multistore 9.2 from ASP.NET Storefront. We allow embedded capture mechanisms from Google Checkout, from Amazon, from Squirrel, which is MoneyBookers, from WorldPay, from Ogon, from PayPal. All of those are embedded seamlessly and allow you to, cap to appear to capture and transmit but actually pass the burden of compliance to other qualified third parties. It means that you can sit back and chill and not have to take on the burden of compliance. <laughs> Social commerce, uh, which of us can possibly ignore this today? Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest are just taking over our world. Uh, out of the box, our, our product pages can come with Facebook with, uh, with sharing mechanisms but we also uh, actively promote uh, the Compulix, in, in our case, the Compulix add-on bundle for Facebook. Uh, .feed is about to be feeding Facebook shop tab. tab. Uh, we all know how important this is. And ding, I think we'll take it on to mobile, which is, yes, thank you, ding. <laughs> thank you. Uh, mobile commerce is, is just unavoidable. We are taking it so seriously. We've been selling as an add-on 
full mobile commerce for two years now, uh, and I'll pre-release the fact that in, in less than six weeks, we will now, we now see this as being so totally dominant that we will be delivering full jQuery mobile commerce as part of core code uh, before the end of April. And we're, and we're proud of that. We're driven by the community, just as .NET Nuke is driven by the community. We listen, we learn, and we try all the time to improve our own offering to meet the needs of the community. So that's ASP.NET Storefront. I'm handing back now. I'm going to go mute and hand back to Mitch and Laurie, who are going to demonstrate what I hope we've all, we've all talked about this morning, the power, the enormous power of the combination of the management Great. Hey, um, Lori, do you want to uh, introduce everybody to Inesto Nuke and then give us a demo? I will. I will do that. Yeah. So, so Brilliance Business Solutions, to give you some background, we um, have been developing websites since 1998 and working with .NET Nuke since 2006. And we use .NET Nuke as our main platform um, for deploying websites. But what we know is that many of our customers have needs that require ASP.NET Storefront for e-commerce. And that's why we fell in love with ASP.NET Storefront as a platform. Um, if you are familiar with the history of ASP.NET Storefront and .NET Nuke, you know that this isn't the first time that they've been used together. In the past, before Vortex acquired ASP.NET Storefront, there was an ASP.NET Storefront module developed that was installed with inside of .NET Nuke um, as a module. And the previous owners of ASP.NET Storefront had decided at a point to drop support for that for that product. Um, that was back when ASP.NET Storefront was on version 7. Um, and you know, we, Brilliance really believed that these are two world-class products that we wanted to offer a way to be used together because our customers had a need and we wanted a way to use them and we saw a need to use them both on their latest versions together in a way that was seamless. And um, when Vortex acquired ASP.NET Storefront, they chose not to renew that development, but to turn and look to developers to offer that, which is why we're here today. And so we have built a product called Inesto Nuke. The, the name comes from the Italian word Inesto, meaning to graft. And so our approach was not to redevelop ASP.NET Storefront as a module that's installed inside of .NET Nuke but rather to have ASP.NET Storefront and .NET Nuke installed side by side, so two separate web applications. And Inesto Nuke is then installed as a .NET Nuke extension within .NET Nuke, allowing users to log in and move back and forth seamlessly between the two products and not knowing that, that there are, are two different products that they are, are in. Um, Inesto Nuke's on the .NET Nuke store. You can install it yourself. And um, we're gonna we'll move into the demo here. If you guys want to flip control over to me, I will. Um, I'll let you get everybody take a look. Thanks, Lori. Yeah, we're, we'll uh, switch control over to you, and then you can um, we can see your screen, and and you can do a demo. Great. All right. Okay, you should be able to see my screen. So, um, great. Um, so this demo is set up using .NET Nuke 6.1 um, Enterprise Edition, and Inesto Nuke can be used with .NET Nuke's Community Professional and Enterprise Edition products. Um, this is also using ASP.NET Storefront's latest version of their multi-store product. Um, and so what I wanted to start with was just taking a look that we are here in .NET Nuke and we can see some examples of why it makes sense to use .NET Nuke and ASP.NET Storefront together. On our homepage, we have a blog entry that we can see, which is one of the great things that we can do using .NET Nuke. Uh, we have the ability, we'll take a look in a little bit, we have some support forums that come from .NET Nuke, um, document library and our tech specs. We're able to have all of this in one seamless experience for our end user. You'll see here over on the left that we have a category listing 
that's actually here. Um, this is data from ASP.NET storefront that is appearing within .NET Nuke. And this was done using the .NET Nuke reports module, which is a free module available for .NET Nuke. And this takes maybe 15 to 30 minutes for a developer to set up within .NET Nuke. It's a SQL query that's, that's formatted in a certain way to give that category listing within .NET Nuke. So a very straightforward thing to set up. So um, we are going to go ahead and pretend we're a customer. We've come to the .NET Nuke homepage. Um, you'll see that I'm not logged in. And um, we're going to move from .NET Nuke into ASP.NET Storefront by clicking on this product. You'll notice as we do that the, the experience, the look and feel is the same. So um, up here in the subdomain, you can see it says ASP.NET Storefront.IYC demo. That's for the purpose of this demo so that you can know where we're at. Um, on your site, you might have that just say store.yourcompany.com. And the look and feel is the same. Um, because of the fact that we have created two skins, one for .NET Nuke and one for ASP.NET Storefront that match each other. So there's not, there's not any magic there, but there in, it's a skin conversion process that, um, that we are familiar with and we have some other Anesto Nuke implementation partners that you can find on the Anesto Nuke website that can help you with that as well or, or your developer can assist you with that as, as well. Um, so we're going to go ahead and add this product to our cart. We can see some of the great features from ASP.NET Storefront, they automatically, dynamically um, find related products that are applicable to a product and display it here. So we're going to add this to our shopping cart. And one of the things that I love about ASP.NET Storefront is that they have many tools that are built to make it very simple for the user to um, to place their order with you. And this is one of them. They have three different checkout methods. And this is an example of the smart one page checkout, which is an add-on available from Vortex, um, from ASP.NET Storefront in their add-on marketplace. Um, and so as you can see, this makes it really simple for users to quickly check out. It's all on one page. When we enter the zip code, it automatically determines our city and state. And um, just makes it very quick and simple. It uses Ajax to move through the checkout process. This is pulling back UPS real-time rates. I set up in the store that UPS ground would be free for orders over a certain size. And so we can very quickly move through this payment process. And the goal is that this is going to be very quick and easy for our customers as well. Uh, ASP.NET Storefront will manage adding customers to a list and that opt-in process. And it allows customers via the Smart One Page Checkout to create an account at the end of the process so that doesn't get in the way of them creating their order. So we're going to go ahead and place our order here. We see our order receipt page. And what you can see is that when I place that order, an account was created for me. It sent me a receipt. It also sent a notification to the store administrator. And I'm logged in now as Lori McDonald within the store. I'm in ASP.NET Storefront. But now as a customer, I can choose. I can say, you know what, I want to go and check out the support forms, or I have a question. I can move over into support, which takes me back into .NET Nuke, you can see here. I'm still logged in. This is a seamless experience for me. And now I can drill into the forums and post a message here. So this is one example of many of the reasons that these two tools are wonderful to be used together because of the fact that you know, ASP.NET Storefront is best in class for e-commerce, but it's not built for content management. And companies, while they have to have e-commerce, they have many other things they need to offer through their website, including lead capture forms and searching through document libraries and blogs and customer forums. So to have all of these things in one seamless experience for the end user is what you're offered by combining .NET Nuke and ASP.NET Storefront. So um, I will um, turn this back over to, um, I, so that we can get back to the slides here. Let's see. Here we go, uh, Lori. You got it? Okay, great. Yeah. And then, you know, what, what I want to 
continue to talk about here is we just looked very briefly at some of the features available in ASP.NET Storefront, but there is so much more, both in the base product itself. They have, ASP.NET Storefront has wonderful support for expanding in the international markets in terms of handling VAT and currency conversions and localization, but also as Joe referenced, there is such a depth of, of um, uh, different add-ons and the availability to extend the ASP.NET Storefront. And there are add-ons um, such as the ability to, to filter by price and product features to make it very simple for users to find the product they're looking for. There's an add-on that allows you to automatically email customers with a coupon after they've placed their purchase if it's an order over a certain size. Um, there are add-ons available to segment, um, to segment customers by um, their, their purchase history and to send different emails to different customers depending on what they purchased or how long it's been since they purchased. Obviously with a name like ASP.NET Storefront Multi-Store, ASP.NET Storefront as it's, at its core is designed for the ability to have microsites and multiple stores that are all simply managed in one interface. And I know a request that comes up a lot for customers that we're working with, because we, we work with a lot of manufacturers, is uh, custom pricing for different customers and allowing customers to log in and see their own specific pricing. So these are just a few of the many more features that are available with ASP.NET Storefront and the, and the add-ons that are a part of their community. So Mitch, I, uh, I think I'll turn it back to you. Great. Thanks again, Lori. Um, good demo. We're getting a lot of good questions, so I want to um, speed through this, this slide and the next one. But um, yeah, a lot of you may be wondering, how do we get started? Well, there's, there's free trials available from all three companies, and these are the, the uh, URLs for our websites. <clears throat> Poke around. Um, there's product tours. There's uh, um, free open source uh, versions of our product and ASP.NET Storefront's product. And, um, there's also trials available, so uh, poke around and I'm sure you'll find uh, an addition or a trial that suits your needs. And with that, I'd like to open it up to questions. We've actually been receiving a bunch of really good questions, Lori. Um, so Great. Um, we'll just get started. Um, we, we've got a few people actually asking questions about skinning and design. Um, so, uh, for instance, like how easy would you say it is to in the, the site, a .NET Nuke site, the way you want it, and does it require two different skins, one for ASP and one for .NET Nuke? Yes, so technically they are two different files, they're two different skins, but obviously once you have one skin designed, it's, there's a process of kind of converting that to match. So um, you're using the same CSS and the same you know, basic HTML elements that you've used for one and the other. So it's not really like creating an entirely new skin and um, that you know that is a process that we've been through before and we have some other partners that have been through that process before so if it's something that uh, that they need help with they can go to nestonuke.com and look at our partners page for some vendors that can help got it um, art's asking a question about how uh, an e-commerce store handles the tracking of correspondence with customers following an order do you need is there a way to do that direct from the website or do you need to drop into something like Outlook to do that? Um, I don't know, Joe, I don't know if you have an answer for that question. I don't know of an out of the box way to track correspondence with customers following a purchase. Well, I mean .NET new there's uh, .NET new modules for, for email. Sure. sure. Right. Right. Y yes, there's, there's Traditionally, e-commerce tends to stop at the time of at the time of order capture or the time of order fulfillment. Um, but as you say, you know there, there are some great .NET new modules for, for capture of that, uh, and and quite a lot, quite a number of CMS modules uh, for um, I'm sorry, CSR modules for uh, for e-commerce too, and we sell a couple of um, uh, refund rebate. Uh, order forms, but not not through email. You know, not not, not direct into like email for a capture. Got it. Um, um, so, so, hey, Joe, can you go on mute? Yeah. So, on um, an example of that would be the .NET Nuke store itself, which is a .NET Nuke uh, website. 
And um, we handle a lot of email correspondence directly through the site, uh, particularly around order confirmations and that sort of thing. So I would, I would point to that as more of a CMS capability. Um, an, another uh, quick question about ASP.NET Storefront. Is, is it written in C-sharp or Visual Basic? It's available in both, uh, but it's, it's written in C-sharp and you can get the code available in both C-sharp and VB. Got it. Um, so uh, a question, another question that we have is, um, you know, can I have something like a most popular products listing display next to my uh, blog, for instance, like the a DNN blog module? Yeah, actually you can. So that's a good example. That would be very similar to the um, same way that we set up the category listing within .NET Nuke when we were looking at the home page and saw that we could see all the product categories there. And that was set up using the .NET Nuke reports module. So again, you know, any place within .NET Nuke, you can be pulling and displaying information from ASP.NET Storefront using things like the .NET Nuke reports module. Um, in addition, you know, in the future, we're looking at, you know, via our Ernesto Nuke offering at ways to simplify that process of setup, but again, setting up those reports modules is, is really very straightforward to do. Cool. Uh, Mike is asking a question. On the home page of your demo, Lori, um, the product image, how was that displayed since, um, since it was on the DNN site, not the store site? Yes. I, in that case, that was actually just an HTML content area that um, that was sourcing the image from the, AS, the ASP.NET storefront site. There are ways to set that up to dynamically generate that information, you know, to have that be database driven, but that's not how we had it set up in our demo. Got it. And um, we're getting some questions about um, any sort of further discussion about details around the integration of um, DNN and ASP.NET storefront, which means, you know, in Um uh, So, Maybe, Lori, you can maybe go into the next level of detail about Inesto Nuke. Um, what's it written in? How, does, how, does, uh, how do you install it? How, what's the integration look like? Sure. Um, yeah, the integration, it's, it's installed as it's a .NET Nuke extension, so it's a membership and authentication provider. Um, the install process um, takes less than an hour. Um, you, so, and you know, you're installing this within your .NET Nuke portal as an extension as you would install another module, and then there are some web config changes that you have to make um, to support the single, the fact that you're logging in in one place and it's working in both. So there are same things that you have to do with um, your forms authentication setup within ASP.NET Storefront in .NET Nuke to make those authentication cookies match. Um, but it's all a very well documented process, and we certainly have had um, store owners that have, you know, that have, um, you know, a familiarity with the platform install this and, and get th through that without any help from us. Okay, good. Um, another question about images. Um, do you use GDI for image generation? Or does one have to upload the image at exact size that you want to display? Um, yeah, I don't know if, if Joe wants to talk about the images or not. I mean, ASP.NET Storefront has automatic resizing capabilities as a part of, of that process. Um, that They're resized when the administrator uploads the image. They're not um, stored in the database, but they're actually stored as files. But, but there is automatic resizing that takes place as a part of that upload if you configure your store to handle that for you. Cool. Um, and the next question, I think it's more of a .NET new question. Our store is a subdomain and our main site at the root level uh, is at the root level. Um, can we somehow merge or bridge the user login accounts so that the customer only needs one login? Um, I believe that uh, site groups which came out with our DNN 6 release would allow you to do that, or 6.1 release would allow you to do that. But um, Laura, do you have do you have a more detailed answer to that one? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not certain if I totally understand this scenario, but from what I'm hearing, yes, that totally can happen. 
and we've configured other sites that way with, with subdomains um, that you can have a shared user between the two. So, um, but, you know, that's kind of effectively what I was showing here between ASP.NET Storefront and .NET Nuke, and the same thing can be done with multiple DNM portals as well and the, and the site groups as you referenced, Mitch. Got it. Um, we're getting a few questions about licensing. Um, can you review a little bit uh, the licensing of Ernesto Nuke and how that works and how it's related to the to, uh, to DNN licensing? Sure. So Ernesto Nuke, uh, the license is tied to your .NET Nuke domain um, and um, the pricing, I believe it's $545 for a single license. Um, we encourage users to also buy a year of updates, which brings the cost for the Inesso Nuke license to around $720. Um, and there separately is a license for ASP.NET Storefront that you need to buy separately. Um, and, and their license, including the year of updates without source, is around $1,500 um, for their standard multi-store product that allows you to have an unlimited amount of products in it. Um, and those can be used with the .NET New Community Professional or Enterprise versions. Um, so in terms of .NET, the .NET New licensing, you know, that depends on, on which route and what needs that you have there. Yeah, exactly. And our professional edition starts out at just under three thousand dollars a year in a subscription license model, and um, uh, it goes uh, up from there. If you want enterprise capabilities, um, you know, there's there's more capabilities in our enterprise edition, and um, the pricing there starts at uh, just under five thousand dollars a year. Um, here's an interesting question. It's sort of open ended, but how big a customer does customer have to be really to implement the system? In other words, um, what's sort of the recommended size of a portfolio of products or amount of, of e-commerce traffic where a company should consider this kind of integrated solution? Well, I guess that depends on the company. I mean, we've worked with customers to set up integrated solutions when they're a shop of 15 or 20 people. Um, it really depends on what things are taking you the most time and how can you reduce the amount of time that you have to spend to offer a great solution to your customers. So what we really like to look at is where are the ways that we can save you time through your website and um, you know, increase your ability to ship out lots of orders and make customers happy through the solution that you have. So I don't know that it's so much a matter of how big the company is, but, but really you know, what their specific needs are. And we do have some tools available to help companies calculate their return on investment. Um, and so that's something that you know, if, if people want to contact me afterwards, I'd be happy to share. Cool. And then I, I think we have time for one final question, which is, um, about reporting, you know, um, so reporting and analytics are going to be critical here. Um, can you comment about the reporting um, that's available with this solution? Sure. Um, yeah, so ASP.NET Storefront comes with some great standard reports that are built into the administrative interface. Um, in addition, you can get really powerful reporting through built-in integration with Google Analytics with their e-commerce tracking. So that's very simple to um, set up and configure with an ASP.NET Storefront. But uh, actually, reporting is a, another great reason to use .NET Nuke and ASP.NET Storefront together um, because some of the powerful uh, .NET Nuke reports modules that are available from the .NET Nuke store, you can really create some great reports to make visible to select individuals uh, via your .NET Nuke portal. So anything from SSRS reports or SQL queries that you want to export into Excel files, those are all things you can do using .NET Nuke modules. And if I can actually put in a plug for the ASP.NET Storefront user conference that's coming up in Ashland, Oregon in a few weeks. I'll be speaking on the topic of reporting for ASP.NET Storefront, so if anybody's interested in learning more about ASP.NET Storefront, it would be great for them to join us at the conference to learn more. Thanks so much, Lori. Um, I think that we've uh, run out of time, and uh, we've got a lot more questions to answer, so uh, listen, everybody that's asked a question that we haven't answered yet, we will definitely reach out to you on email and make sure that your questions get answered. I want to thank our speakers, Joe and Lori. Great job. And uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in this morning and uh, for your time. And enjoy the rest of your day.